the breaking place. A place of brokenness. Yes. Hallelujah. Nobody really likes broke things. If your car is broken, you take it to the mechanic and he fixes it. Amen. And if it's broken beyond repair, you trade it in. Go get something else. Because you can't use something that's broken. Amen. Hallelujah. Yet, with the master, he delights in using things that are broken. Mm -hmm. He delights in dealing with things that seem to be beyond, to be beyond the repair of human capabilities and the capacity of the mind to understand the brokenness of the thing that he's dealing with. God gets glory out of broken things. Lord, I pray for you. He tells us, amen, that we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence and the glory of God may be of God and not of us. God takes his magnificent glory and power and invest it in a cracked pot. So that when you see the pot, you're not really seeing the pot. You're seeing the glory that's been invested inside. Amen. You see, when you see me, you're not really seeing me when you marvel. You're actually seeing the God that is in me. Because if I really became visible, you would see all of the hairline fractions and all of the cracks and all of the dents and, and, and how my paint has been chipped and, and faded. You will see, amen, my lack of patience. You will see, amen, my fears and you will be exposed to my weaknesses because in my flesh there dwells no good thing. And yet, we as men kind try to put our own effort and strength in the face of God. Yeah. Can I talk for a few minutes? Oh, yeah. sure. no. We, amen, try to handle it ourselves. Amen. Lord, I pray. Uh -huh. Lord Jesus. And praise the Lord in the midst of us trying to handle situations, we only continually find ourselves going around and around in the same path. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. And can't make heads nor tails of a situation. That's right, that's right. Why is it that I find myself in the same situation, time after time, year after year, season after season, when I know that I'm smart enough, when I know that I'm strong enough, when I know that I'm intelligent, when I know that I'm beautiful, when I know that I have all the education that I need, and yet I cannot move, amen, or advance, praise the Lord. Could it be that you are operating in a spirit of pride. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. Pride is a terrible thing. Yes, it is. Pride yes, it is. is a product of an unbroken man oh, yeah. or an unbroken woman. Amen. Right. Pride will have you do the same thing the same way and expect a different outcome which is insanity. That's right, man. Pride will have you do things that don't make sense, and you know it ain't gonna work, amen, when you start doing it, but you keep doing it, amen, because you don't want nobody to tell you nothing different because you are too arrogant. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're too proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Pride. Pride. Yes, sir. 
Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, yes. and a haughty spirit before fall. Amen. Amen. Where you see destruction and falling, somewhere there was pride. When you hear that a minister fell in sin, or when you hear that somebody backslid and went back into the world, somewhere there was pride. Right. <laughs> somewhere there was an unyielding and an unbroken spirit. Yeah. Pride teaches man to depend on self. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. When you walk in pride. You say things like, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. Oh, yes. Amen. I'm a self-made man. Mm -hmm. Y'all heard people say that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm a self-made man. Or mm -hmm. well, I'm an independent woman. Amen. I can do this and I can do that. And, 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 and while independence and self-reliance in and of itself is not a bad thing, because I hate to deal with somebody that can't do nothing for themselves. Amen. When you walk in pride and self-reliance, amen, and independent, and you, and, and you boast yourself to be strong, amen, it does not give room to give God glory. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Uh, that's right. When you boast of how strong you are, amen, God cannot be seen anywhere in the equation. Uh, that's right. When you, amen, talk about good you got it going on usually God will find a way to hide from you but the Bible says he resisted the pride right. amen y'all better hear what I'm telling you amen. amen God says I resist the pride could it be that everything that you seem to try to do and it looks like it keeps falling it's because you are doing it through self reliance and strengthening your own self and God says when you behave in that fashion, I will resist you. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. Praise our God. When God resists you, there ain't nobody in the world that can help you. That's right. Amen. When God resists you, I don't care what prophet you go see. I don't care who lay hands on you. I don't care who, amen, speak a word in your life. When you walk walking around in pride and arrogance, God resists you. There is nothing that anybody else can do for you. Amen. Amen. One of the things I have learned as I have matured somewhat in the pastorate is that you can't make nobody live right. Amen. You can't make nobody come to Jesus. Amen. You can't make them live whole no matter how good you explain it. Amen. If a person is walking in self-reliance and pride, amen, they will have to go through a breaking experience. That's yes, right. Lord. Amen. They will have to go, amen, into a place, amen, to where nobody can bring them out but God. Amen. Right. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm telling hey, you. Amen. I found out, praise God, that no matter how much I may love somebody, amen, I can't be their salvation and I can't be their Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. All I can do is do like the mother told her son. Son, I'm going to put you in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And he's angry not because he hates you, but he's angry because of your pride and the decision that you make to do things without him. And he is so committed to bringing you into the kingdom that he will allow you to go through hell or high water and then to bring you to a breaking place in God. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all hear what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. That's right. I know that's right. The unbroken man does not rely or depend on God. He depends on himself. Amen. He depends on his own wits. He depends on his own education. He depends on his own, praise the Lord, common sense, praise the Lord. And like I said, it's not wrong, amen, to have knowledge. But whenever, praise our God, you are so dependent on your five senses, amen, and not depending on God, there are things that will happen in your life for which you have no point in reference. There are some places that you will go to that your education cannot help you. Amen. Preach on the start. 
There are some places that you will get into, amen, that your five senses will lie to you and you will not know how to get out of it. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. You're going into a breaking place. Amen. Amen. God can't use you mm -hmm. until you're broken. That's right. uh -huh. God can't get the glory out of you until you're broken. Amen. If you listen at a preacher unbroken versus one that has experienced the breaking place, yeah. Yeah. their messages is so different. Oh, yeah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. There, the power and the anointing from which they preach under has a different effect. Uh -huh. Because one is preaching on the knowledge of what they know, and then the other is preaching on experiencing the God of the Scripture. Amen. And when you have experienced the God, let me tell you something, the experience that you have with God will trump the knowledge of God any day. Amen. Amen. When you have an experience with God, uh -huh. your experience, amen, will trump whatever kind of knowledge or what you have ever learned, even by reading, because my experience tells me who God is. Yep. And when I have the experience with God, I learn how to trust Him even when I can't trace Him. Amen. 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 When I have the experience with God, I learn that, amen, everything is really going to be all right. When I have the experience with God, hallelujah, I learn, praise the Lord, that no matter how bad my situation may be, God will eventually Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're smart and you're intelligent. And many times you rely on your intelligence. 
churches and let me get you out of certain situations and when you amen through your own cognitive skills pull yourself out of a situation you don't give me glory you don't say it was the Lord that brought me out you say well I worked very hard and, and I was very smart and oh I dodged that bullet this time and then you say those kind of things because you have used your own skill but God says I'm getting ready to let you get into something for which you have no point in reference and I'm going to put you in a place where you got to wait on somebody to bring you your bread and wait on somebody to bring you your water. You're going to have to wait, praise God. You're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to wait. I know you used to get up and get your keys in your hand and go on when you get ready, but I'm getting ready to break you so you got to wait, praise God. I'm getting ready to break you so you have to wait on somebody. Oh, there is nothing humbling like wanting to go somewhere and got to wait on somebody till they get ready to go. And it's not like you can walk up to them and say, look, Andre, I'm ready to go. Can we go now? When Andre, I got the keys and she got the gas, and then I got to wait till she get ready if I'm riding with her. And then it's a humbling experience. You got to swallow your pride and act like a child sometimes. And God says, that's where I'm trying to get you to. I'm trying to get you to a place where you swallow your pride. So when you feel like you're big and strong, you don't realize that without me, you're nothing. Without me, amen, you can't even take your next breath, hallelujah. Without me, you won't be able to walk. Without me, hallelujah, you will be nothing. Amen. 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 The prayers of a broken person are much more effective. Have you ever dealt with saints? They say they really say, but they haven't been broken. Yeah, They're pride. They're error. Amen. They're, they're, they, 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 they almost are, are, have no mercy for anybody that has failed. Yeah. Anybody that have ever made a mistake, that person has never been broken. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That person has never been on the receiving end of forgiveness. Yeah. Uh. Boy, I feel like preaching. Go ahead. When you are unbroken, you don't have no mercy. When you are unbroken, you look at somebody and say, Try in the world. Did you get in that situation? I thought you had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I thought, you know, all that running around you were doing in church, and now you you ain't got no power. You ain't got no what is wrong with you, brother Troy. If you just would walk like me, hallelujah, and God would bring you out. But the truth of the matter is, how many know you can live holy all you know, but sometimes some things will come and hit you, and you don't know where it came from. And if you ain't been there, hallelujah, glory to God, keep on living. Amen. 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 And if you have, praise the Lord, some patience and shut up a little while, yeah. sometimes things have a way of working itself out. Uh -huh. And she began to testify. And I'm like, where's she going with this? And she began to tell openly of her experience, amen, with her daughter having a child out of wedlock. Amen. Praise you. You don't mind because you testified about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and, and how you live right in the house with somebody that didn't even know that they were expecting. Praise God. And how you raised your child in church. And how, amen, praise the Lord, you did what a good mother should do. And yet, despite your efforts, she still had a child at the house. Praise God. And then she said, somebody asked her, are you okay? Said the paramedic asked her, is she okay? She said, no, I'm not okay. Praise the Lord. And it was comical to us the way she was telling it, amen. She said she cried for three weeks about the thing. And it was comical to us, praise the Lord, amen, because many of us have not been through that breaking point. But see, what she was trying to let you know, I've been in that place, and I've been in that situation. And I know when you get in places where your heart has been broken, and when you get in places where folks that you had confidence disappoint you, honey, I know you've been hallelujah, but I'm here to tell you, you can bounce back from a fall. 
ourselves we have not a high priest uh, that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. The Bible says he took upon himself a man of no reputation, but he came and put on the form of a servant, hallelujah, in order that he may be able to feel what I feel, praise God. You see, divinity could not relate to humanity, and humanity could not relate to divinity. So Jesus said, I'll come in the volume of a book to do your will, God, and I'll be the bridge between humanity and divinity. So Jesus said, even though I'm God, I'm going to lay aside my godness, and I'm going to become weak and beggarly. I'm going to become a poor man. Smooth, and he says, You know what? You know, I'm not, you know, praise the Lord, I'm not, 
you know, I don't have to go out and fight this time. I, I got captain of the host. I got Joab out there. Praise our God. I got good men out there fighting. I, I believe I'll take a vacation. I believe I, I'll stay home and just enjoy, amen, my scenery. Y'all ain't hear me. You see, there was a season when you need to fight, and then there was a season when you needed to stay home. There was a time when David went out to fight, amen, and the enemy almost got him. And so the young men grabbed the hold of him and said, listen, you do no better sitting on the throne as the king. Amen. Your, your years of fighting have passed you. Why don't you, it's time for you to sit down and let us fight. You see, that was the time that he needed to stay home. But he was young and narrow, praise God, and needed to fight, but he stayed home in the wrong season. And when he stayed home in the wrong season, that gave occasion for the devil to get him, praise God. And so he comes out, praise the Lord on his back. Washed. He's on the rooftop. It didn't say she was on the rooftop. He was on the rooftop. She could have been in her house. He might have been a peeping time looking in her window. He looks out there and see this girl naked and she looked good. Let me tell you, I don't, have, I don't care how deep and saved you are. If you're a man that got red blood running through your veins, you see something. It will get your attention. Y'all ain't hear what I'm telling you. Amen. You might as well be real. You ain't got that much Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It will get your attention. That's why the Bible tells you, sisters, to cover up, praise the Lord. Because men are visual, praise God. All right, y'all ain't hear what I'm telling you. Amen. He gets out there and he sees this girl named Bathsheba. Amen. They. Amen. And, and you see, the first look is free. The second look costs you something. He had a choice. He could have turned away. Ooh, I saw that. He could have turned away and then walked in the house and forgot the whole deal. But see, he wasn't broken. God had to show him himself. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So, he stands there and lust out with that woman. Amen. So Calls one of his servants and says, who that girl is? Oh, that's uh, Uriah the Hittite's wife. Yeah. Oh, I can tell you, you've been looking to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's, that's Uriah uh, the Hittite's wife, Bathsheba, yeah? yeah. Sent for her. Yeah. Wow. Now, before y'all get mad at Bathsheba, Bathsheba, a man had to do what the king said. She could have refused. Amen. Probably dead, but she could have been refused. Because she cheated on her husband, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, you yeah, when the king calls for you, amen. You kind of got to do what the king said do. Amen. This is not it wasn't the United States. It, it was a it was a praise the Lord, a theocracy. Yeah. Amen. Y'all ain't understand what I'm telling you. So she she goes to him and he takes this woman. Praise the Lord, and he makes mad, passionate love with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One night of pleasure because, amen, his loins were on fire. Glory to God. And then, praise the Lord, he sends her away before anybody could know anything about it. But how many of you understand, praise our God, that when God is intended to get you broken, hallelujah, that you can't hide nothing from God. God sits high and he looks low. He sees everything. Ain't no need to be no hypocrite. Ain't no need to walk around like everything is all right. God sees everything. God knows everything. God saw you creeping the other night. Hallelujah. God got eyes. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Run to and fro. He sees. God knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Bible says he sees just as good in the dark as he sees in the daytime. Somebody said, well, I'll wait till the midnight hour till my love come tumbling down. I'm going to wait till the midnight hour to get out there and do my thing. Hallelujah. But God said, let me tell you something. I see you in the midnight hour. I see you under them covers covering yourself up. He said, but the cover is too short because when you cover your head, your feet going to show. And when you cover your feet, your head going to show. Oh, you might as well be what you are and live the life because God Sir, what would you know? She sends a letter back to him. 
and say, look, I'm with child. You knock me up. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Now, an unbroken person tries to cover their tracks. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. Unbroken person. That's right. Be on the internet, watching that film, and trying to delete. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Amen. So that nobody can know that you was ever there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, a person that, that ain't broken, amen. Hallelujah. You know you got babes calling you. And you trying to delete, amen, the, the law, the history. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. amen. All y'all ain't been saved all of y'all life. <laughs> Some of you know how to be players. <laughs> Preach on the sky. <laughs> You get a text message and your phone now goes Dick. Hallelujah. And she asks, Who is that? Oh, that was old Bill. He was talking about us going to the sports game. Okay. Hallelujah. And before, praise our God, she can see the phone. You. <laughs> Say amen. 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 Say amen. amen. I'm talking about a man that was always calling. Amen. Not because he loved you so good. Where you at? Who you with? What you doing? Amen. All the time he's calling. You want to know where you at? And he's not doing that because he loves you. He ain't really doing that because he's so jealous. He's just trying to make sure that he don't run into you. Amen. With whoever he's hanging with. Hallelujah. Trying. Praise our God. To cover up his tracks because he's not broken yet. And so David was trying to cover up his tracks. So he said, go get you right. I got a way to fix this situation. They didn't have no abortion clinics back then. So, so, so. David said, I'm going to fix this for So they called Uriah, a man from the battle. David is sitting there acting friendly. Hey, buddy. I was the battle going. Well, we, 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 we're advancing and, and, and we're winning. And, and, and Joab is an excellent uh, general. You know? And so and, and someone's like, oh, boy, you're one of my most faithful soldiers. I tell you what, what you do, well, you know what? Time off. You've been working hard. You need to take some time off. Go to your house and refresh yourself. Good God Almighty. And he made him drunk. Hallelujah. He said, if I can get him drunk. Hallelujah. If I get him drunk. He's been away from his wife for all these months. When he gets drunk, he's going to go home and do what married people do. I get it. I can blame the pregnancy on him. Yeah. Good God Almighty. The devil will have you trying to cover your tracks. The devil will have you letting you smart. You think everybody else is dumb. Thank you, God, to cover over everybody. But I tell you, God's got a whole season. You can't hide. No matter how hard you try. You can't cover it up that good. Because sin stinks in the nostrils of God.
How you treat the little man? God judges. How you treat folk that have been given a man? You've been given authority over. God tells a man that if you're bitter against your wife, he said, I will not hear your prayer. Because if you mistreat your wife, hallelujah, God said, I'm going to get you. Because I told her to submit to you, and I told her to obey you, and you put her at a disadvantage. God says, I put her at a disadvantage, and you take an advantage over by mistreating her. He said, I'll hinder your prayer. Prophet 
healed, they have fasted and prayed. And who knows? God might have mercy. Because he knew that God was a merciful God. Hallelujah. We need God. Then